how Muslims praying in a mall became major controversy in India. On July 15th, several men were booked with a, complete, a police complaint, or FIR, after a video of them offering the Muslim prayer, or namaz, inside a recently opened shopping mall in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh, went viral. The group was charged with multiple charges, including, quote, promoting enmity between different groups on the grounds of religion and, quote, malicious acts intended to outreach religious feelings. Members of the uh, Akhil Bharatiya Hindu Masaba, a local Hindutva group in Lucknow, began protesting outside the mall. M multiple people have been arrested for attempting to give Hindu prayers and chants inside the mall, including a godman who attempted to quote unquote purify the establishment. The right wing outfits also alleged that the mall employed 70% Muslim men and 30% Hindu women, constituting a love jihad plot. Love jihad is a conspiracy in which it is believed the Muslim men deceive Hindu women into marrying them on false pretenses then reveal their true identity as Muslim and force the women to convert to Islam, all in a grand scheme of replacing India's Hindu majority. On July 17th, J. Kumar uh, Gangadhar, the regional director of Lulu India and the proprietor of Lulu Mall, issued a statement denying the allegations of love jihad and stated explicitly that the staff is, quote, over 80% Hindu. What the hell does this got to do with uh, love jihad? Okay. <laughs> okay. This is all a good point. And before we dive in, I want to be clear that I, I picked the title Mall Jihad for the title of this episode today because no one, okay, I want to clarify that no one in India is actually calling this love jihad. I mean, mall jihad. Okay. But I feel like that is such a missed opportunity. Because we have yes. a whole like jihad franchise, we have, we have spit, love jihad, we have spit, spit love jihad. jihad, spit jihad, land jihad, flood jihad, um, uh, uh, the the beer bug, jihad. Oh, that thing, jihad. We can't say. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, yeah, oh, this, is a, this is a huge missed opportunity to You're call right. it mall jihad. Okay. Mall jihad. <laughs> but, yeah. Um. Okay, what does this have to do with Love Jihad? How this got turned into a Love Jihad conspiracy is an excellent question. It actually makes no sense. Let's be clear. <laughs> um, Wait, let me clarify the, something. Some, somebody in live chat is saying this was last week. Well, yeah, we cover the news once every week. What do you expect? We do the news once a week. So, of course, this is last week. <laughs> well, and her. also, I wanted to wait a little while before we covered this story because I could tell that more things are going to evolve. And I'm glad that we did because there has been more that, that's come out. Um, so, it started out with um, a group of men. It looks like about, I don't know, maybe maximum about a dozen people, like, giving namaz in the mall. So, this is how this originally started. Now... That really did happen. Like there was, and those numerous of those men have been arrested. Okay, so a video of this happening went viral, and then ever since then, this mall has turned into a communal, a, a hotbed of communal politics. Okay, inter intergroup tension and politics, and then ever since then, there have been people trying, the, the mall had to explicitly put up signs that say that they do not allow religious prayer in the mall. There have been people who go in and go chant or go sing the Hanuman Kalisa, Chalisa. <clears throat> they end up getting arrested. Like I said, a priest tried to go in there and cleanse the place. <laughs> Um, but then it turned into a love jihad conspiracy because the right wing groups were protesting. Over 200 people showed up to protest this mall after the initial video went viral. Um, they s somehow got this idea that the mall mostly hires, disproportionately hires Muslim men, and then the remaining minority are Hindu women, basically putting them oh in, the, in a concentrated environment to expose them to love jihad. Okay. Basically, like, get all these Hindu women surrounded by these Muslim men where they're just, you know, ducks for the taking. That, that That's kind of the attitude. And then, so this mall, they've had to deal with all the protests. They've had to deal with all the disruption. They've had to put up the signs. Um, they issued a statement about this whole problem. And they were basically saying, you know, 
oh, uh, you know, Lulu Mall does not have any problems with people on the basis of any protected group, caste, religion, blah, blah, blah. We don't permit this kind of conduct. And then they explicitly state that their staff are over 80% Hindu. Now, personally, some out of everything in this story, that kind of stood out to me the most. The, the mall clarified that they hire 80, their staff, the makeup of their employees is like 80% Hindu. Because to me and probably many people, that reads as, well, we have hardly hire Muslims anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which it's speaks not a good to me to the fact that that would be put in an official statement by a company mm. like, speaks to the actual environment going yes. on. Like, Do you get yeah, what I'm like, saying? Like how normalized it is to just be like, we will barely hire Muslims anyways. Yeah. Like, no, we, we didn't do anything wrong. We hire, we don't hire that many Muslims. <laughs> like, no, please. We're not guilty of hiring. Is that what you say? As if that would be something bad. Like, is that what you're That is one significant way in that it can be perceived. I had people, yeah. you know, that I talked like, to who were like, We're not guilty of hiring Muslims. We hardly Muslims. hire Muslims anyways. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, that That also shocked them to be like, this is the environment now. Like, this yeah. is the attitude now. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that is seen as a reasonable explanation. Like, that's okay, no. you actually know what would very be drastic to people. You know what would have been badass? They're like, we hire 80% Hindu, 80% Hindu woman and 20% Muslim men. Okay. Get it right. We get the ratio. Like, why would we hire, <laughs> why would we have more men than women? If you want to do love jihad, we do love jihad properly. Okay. We have to make less men than women available. Okay. Like, why would they do that? Like, yeah, if, if you had control, if you wanted to do proper love jihad, right, you make very few men available. Oh, maybe they think like they're doing it by force. I don't know how this works. But anyway, of course they think that they're doing it by force. Yeah, of course, of course. So maybe they need the numbers so that the women are. <laughs> <laughs> this is turning oh into a gangbang situation. Um, no, okay. So people are pointing out that well, the ratio makes sense to say that the staff is eighty percent Hindu because that's representative of the population of India. That's not my problem. Yes. Like, imagine if a company was like. Oh, well, we hire 80% white okay. people. So like, stop the controversy. We hardly hire yeah. black people. Like that's what, <laughs> that's what yes. I'm getting at. How shocking like the, that is. Okay. But maybe they're not saying that. Maybe just saying what Vishas is saying. Like here, like maybe they're saying, look, the percentages reflect, like we're not discriminating against any group because the percentages reflect what is what the actual percentages are like we're, we're not we're neither discriminating against or for muslims or hindus because the percentages reflect what the averages are in that this is but charitable take the statement doesn't talk about how this is like i'm just religion. trying to be a, give you a charitable yeah, take yeah. an alternative okay, here, here's charitable my charitable take. take here's my charitable take okay because i'm all, i'm also thinking from the other perspective of like marketing and pr and that kind of thing okay arma this is a question to you do you think when the center of your controversy is disproportionate employment of one protected group at the expense of another, okay, when, when that's the question at hand, is it appropriate to explicitly state the religious group makeup of your staff? Okay, you were talking India here. You're talking as if this is like in the middle of like uh, Wokistani, you know, Mujahideen's takeover of like Cal where you live, like California. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you're like, yeah, applying standards that is like too far to the other side. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. This is like, you're you're doing imperialist minds, you know, you're, you're forcing your mindset <laughs> upon India. You know, your standard in california like okay, i don't think that's no armin it's exactly the opposite i'm yeah. i'm if, if that is the standard that i'm used to then me mm. not applying that standard would be bigotry because i'm, I'm not going to lower my expectations i'm kidding okay i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> you got to okay okay Susie. Okay. jesus chill <laughs> all right <laughs> i'm getting like heated today <laughs> um i'm 
actually more interested in the fact that malls are becoming a battleground for religion. Like malls, like like okay, sure. Like I don't know, do theme parks next? Wait, does India have theme parks? Probably, know. of course. Okay. It's a huge country. Um. So okay, here's something I did want to touch on though. So Arkash, no, no, Akrish. I'm, I'm sorry, I pronounced that wrong. Um, <clears throat> says, uh, this actually happened in my city. It was new and it was a new and exciting mall, but the radicals from both sides screwed up the fun. And the yes. user named something I don't remember is saying, frankly, they do namaz everywhere, even on railway platforms blocking the human traffic. Okay, so one point I did want to touch on is the fact that if I was in this mall and I did actually see this original incident, like I would be extremely uncomfortable. Yes. Okay. I, I'm. I'm glad that you uh, clarified that they were blocking human traffic. I don't know opposed to what, but okay. Cow traffic. Cow traffic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. What but I do you. think is really interesting to consider is, I read a um, article today, which basically talks about how there are all of these. It depends on the state. Of course, um, and Uttar Pradesh is, has a lot of specific prohibitions regarding like certain kinds of public prayer and stuff like that. But in general, like public worship is a part of everyday life for hundreds of millions of Indians. But in incidences like this, it becomes clear that the criminalization of it is very selective. Hmm. Wait, this Wait. is it's being criminalized, or is this small just small policy? No, this is actually being criminalized. Wait, so you can't pray in malls? That's the law. It's no, it's good. It's it's um, it has to do with public worship in general. It has. But can't you have like a prayer have room? Anything to do with? Can you not have like a, can the mall not have a prayer room? Sure, they can. Well, it's also oh. their private establishment, so they can do that. But so why don't they in do terms that? of like, why they were arrested and stuff, it's because of public ordinances, not because of mall policy. Okay, but why can't the mall just like here's the solution? We have prayer rooms. We have a we have a we have a mall mosque and a mall temple. Okay, so well, that's, that's ridiculous, Armin. Like they don't have to do that. Well, I mean, apparently they do now. Their mall is being turned into a, like a religious. <laughs> <world>. <laughs> <laughs> battlegrounds <laughs> so they have to fix this i mean i mean they could like, no i think they're the way that they fix it is exactly what they do which is like enforce their policies for their private well, establishment no that's just gonna that's just gonna that's just invitation to challenge that are like oh, oh and people most... have been <laughs> i know that's like we're not gonna let you pray here uh, both muslims and hindus are gonna be like watch us right i mean people are proud to be like a lot of religious, very religious people are looking for a challenge to demonstrate how much they care about the religion. So they're yep. looking for somebody to tell them not to practice the religion. And they're going to be like, okay, sure, this, is a, this was an open invitation. You telling us not to do this is an open invitation to challenge your policies, right? So I think like this is like, you're like, why is the mall submitting? I'm like, well, because they need to make money. I mean, what do you want? To, the mall is not the mall owners are not going to be like, we're going to stand by our principles and go bankrupt. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think like they should be like, okay, here's a corner for your prayers. Like, I don't like. I don't know. Isn't that the best solution? It's it, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but then it actually would be like religious colonization into the <laughs> business. This is India. They should do a dance off and attract more customers. Okay. They were like, you know what? Honestly, Bring yes. Bring it. We'll have a Muslim versus Hindu dance off and more custom. Come what? People advertise it. Come what? Yo. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's the thing. Here in downtown San except, Francisco, except they have a dance-off at the mall. They have a dance-off like at, at the mall downtown, and it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> Armin, I'm 100% behind this idea. Sometimes you have some ideas on the show, creative solutions that right. raise a couple eyebrows, but this one, I back one. Okay, but dancing <laughs> is haram for the Muslim ones, so I guess, like, I think the Hindus can do a dance-off, and the Muslims will stand up, and they will come, and they go back sick down, like, we can't, sorry. 
Like that could be too funny. <laughs> <laughs> they're like they start the music as if they're about to dance, and they're like, "Hey, wait, it's Harold." Like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, know, yeah, that yeah. could be funny. It Record be funny. scratch. <laughs> okay, oh okay, read some, let's read some comments. Yeah. Um, so, um, okay, so this is actually very important. Mo Gamble was asking, wasn't this exposed as Muslims trying to, Hindus, excuse me, was, wasn't this exposed as Hindus trying to fake being Muslim to defame the mall or incite violence? So basically, wasn't this supposed to be like a Hindu false flag attempt to frame the Muslims? Okay, actually, no, this was completely fake news. And this was fake news that was pushed by a lot of, there was Congress like representatives um who posted this so politicians as well as the national herald which is seen as like kind of the mouthpiece of the indian congress still has stories on their website explaining how this was all hindus faking it which is completely untrue okay so how are people who think that you and i susie are people who are just anti-hindu are going to explain this like you're just like you could have just jumped on this bandwagon and be like yeah the muslims are not doing this hindus are faking it but you're like no no it's not true okay so i think like you're just an expert at takia okay so you're just saying <laughs> that you're just saying that so that hindus are like oh she actually hmm this is confusing us she's actually objective and then you get them with propaganda okay <laughs> You know, they trust yeah, yeah, yeah. you now. No, I'm like, yeah. I'm like seven layers deep on Takia. Like, don't worry. Yeah. About it. <laughs> um, right. Okay. So Oxymoron is saying if the mall was accused of anti-Hindu discrimination, it only makes sense that their defense comes this way. No, no. So this is why most of their apology completely accurately did that, where you just reiterate in a statement that you do not discriminate on the basis of any religion, group, gender, sex, caste, whatever, whatever, any protected category. And most of their statement reiterated that. But going the further step to explicitly clarify in numbers the religious makeup of their staff is very weird to me. That's very yeah. weird to me. Okay, this is this is like... This is very, well, okay, I, this is kind of, to be honest, like, this is very Western standards for, like, you know what I mean? Like, to be very mindful of, but I guess you're right, like, maybe it should be everywhere standard, but, like, this is, like, a little bit too picky, I think, maybe. I don't know if, if they're, okay, I know that this is not a perfect, this isn't equivalent. I know this mm. isn't equivalent but for the sake of not completely equivalent for the sake of illustration, I'll, I'll do it. So say there's a controversy and there's a controversy about that happens with a bunch of like black and Mexican employees. And then the company comes forward and in its defense, they say, you know, we don't, you know, discriminate on the basis of any protected category, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and by the way, 80% of our staff is white. Yeah. Yeah. That's 80%. outrageous to me. That would be outrageous to me. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. But I just think like most of the world hasn't come to the point. Like, if you're saying like we're discriminating against white people, and like somebody says like, how could you say that? Like, no, actually, that doesn't seem that outrageous. Like, let's say for example, somebody says like uh, in the United States accuses um, this company of reverse racism. Right, they they say reverse racism. Like mm -hmm. you're now you're like overcorrecting. You're now racist against white people. Are you like, bitch? Most of the people we hire here is white. Oh, I, I get it. Like for example, actually, even in the United States, people say that they like, like, um, they say like, um, there's a war on Christian Christians in the United States, right? Like, like all your presidents have been Christian, or you know, even like, so that would be like. Or all, you know, like most of your presidents have been white. People are like, okay, yeah, that may be a counter argument to this whole attack on white. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm I see this. what you mean, but at the same time, when you're bringing forward the like makeup, the demographic makeup of your, uh, of your staff to basically say we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. That's weird to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay, sure. Yeah. But you know what? I'm like, I'll consider what you said. That's okay. Um, do you want to read the rest of these comments? Yeah, yeah. Let's just go through them fast. 
Okay, so D is saying any business is going to employ people from the locality. Here is mostly Hindus, so no surprise. True. In a Muslim neighborhood, mostly Muslims will be employed. I agree. Um, okay, I don't know what that comment is referring to. Um, Forever Stormy is saying eventually there will be Muslim toilets and Hindu toilets. Can't have Abraman <laughs> can't have Abrahamic farts ruining your day while shopping for cheap clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you think that India will reach a level of open segregation to that degree, like literally segregated toilets? No. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I hope. Well, but I know that Forever Stormy is making. Toilet, it. We cannot know, tolerate these Abrahamic farts. <laughs> okay, to uh, toilets, no, but water fountains, definitely. Oh my god. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. No. You're the worst. No. Um, Oxymoron is saying again with your dance off idea. No, this dance is jihad. dance off jihad. Okay, See, I don't know about that branding thing. because we want the Hindus to participate as well. I don't want Hindus to think that they're participating in a jihad, so they need to like, like, no, thank you, like, you know what I mean? So, we mm -hmm. need to have a better name. Maybe that could be the branding for the Islamic side, yeah, okay, and. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bengal Hindu is saying Congress, meaning the Indian Congress, the opposition party, one of the opposition parties, will lose more Hindu votes because of these propagandas. Unfortunately, progressives will not understand it. Yeah. It's very weird in India when you say Congress, you're referring to only one side. People who don't know about India, they're going to be like, they think like you're talking about the entirety, like Congress, like Congress, like in other countries, when you say Congress, you're talking about all parties. In India, mm -hmm. when you say Congress, you're talking about you know, only one side. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah. So we have to clarify that, I guess, every time we say Congress. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.